Hello again, welcome back to another video. Um, this channel is quite heavy on SLRs and I think we need to kind of change that up a little bit and look at different types of cameras. So for today's we're looking at the Olympus XA series and this is, as it says quite clearly, an XA1. These are quite small cameras, very lightweight compared to what I've been dealing with recently. Very easy to slip in your pocket, it's got a nice little cord on it. It's a 35mm camera. This is the basic version. There was the original XA and then there was versions 1, 2, 3 and 4 I think. And this one is the least feature packed. And um, it's regarded as being not too popular amongst the enthusiasts. It's going to do with a good clean, this camera makes it look filthy. Um, but the prices on all of these XA series cameras have gone through the roof. They're, they're quite a fashionable thing. You know, I picked this up, I think, for a couple of pounds years ago. You know, they're not expensive cameras. Interesting in the layer, interesting in the design, but um, quite basic. On the bottom, you've got the choice of two film speeds, either 400 or 100. That's it. Very, very simple. This is the front, and this part slides across to reveal the lens, as you can see, is a 35mm f4, and I believe it goes down to 22, actually, it's a f4 to 22. Uh, it's a leaf shuttered camera, and it runs from speeds, of, I believe, a 30th of a second through to about 250th, if I remember right. This is a shutter release button up here. It's very cheaply made, it's basically plastic. And on the top you've also got a frame counter. It tells you what number of exposures you're on. This is the film advance. You move this with your thumb, just to wind the film on. This is the viewfinder that you look through. There's nothing much to see apart from a framing window. If there's not enough light, you will get a little red thing like that will pop up and it won't allow you to take a picture you'll say no there's not enough light this sort of textured finish around here is selenium cells so this camera doesn't use batteries it relies on sunlight or generally light uh, to operate i don't know it might, it might fire if it's pointing at the at the lamp but no this just slides across to protect the lens, so it's quite a nice little camera to slip in a coat pocket or jacket, even. It does have the usual rewind crank. It's 35mm camera, so it takes normal 35mm film. But just with the two speed settings, the 400 and the, and the 100. It is very plasticky. So to open the back, I should have gone out on this side, there's a few connections, and those connections are for the flash that goes with it, which is this thing, and it clips onto the side. I'll show you that in a minute. To open the back, like a lot of cameras, this is from 1982, this one. 80s are very fashionable now. There's the, uh, the pressure plate on the back. You can see the standard sort of 35mm take-up spool sprocket drive and this is where your film's going to go there's some ceiling along here that needs changing some light seals it's got starting to go sticky we could do with a bit of a clean up you can see there which is where the seal is starting to deteriorate and sticking but yeah very very simple i think some of the internal bits of metal that feels like metal there but the bulk of it is plastic Makes it very lightweight, cheap to manufacture, I suppose. I don't think they were particularly expensive when they came out. Right, the flash unit runs on one AA battery. So I've already put a battery in there, just the one AA battery. And this attaches to the side. You can see there's a screw thread. And you just screw that in and that attaches the flash to the side there's a cover for that this cover goes over the top to make it look a bit more discreet he says there you go so 
that fits over there, and there is a sort of scale on here with a ASA 100 film, 7.5 feet. Uh, this is the range of the flash gun, the power of it, with 400 speed film, uh, 15 feet, 4.5 meters, that's 2.3 meters. But yeah, it screws onto the side. On the top it's got an indicator and it's got this switch but you don't need to worry about the switch at all because on the front of the camera you've got a lever down the bottom here and it says flash. If you move that across you'll notice that this button here has moved and it's turned the flash gun on. It's a bit of an odd layout, I don't quite know why they got that button up there really. I suppose you could turn it off from up there, but it's, there you go. That shows you that the flash is charged. So if you're going to take a photograph now, the flash will go off in advance the film, because it, it knows there's enough light now. It charges quite quick. It's a fixed focus camera, so there's no need to worry about focusing. There's no need to worry about exposure. It really is a, a point and shoot. If there isn't enough light to take a photograph, it won't let you. It'll just show you that red flag in the window. That's so how you just wind on. Very easy action. Oh, no, I'll flush you in the eyes with that. It's quite nice. I can see why they're so popular. Probably great for street photography. It's very quiet. It's quite discreet. Well, if you haven't got the flash on it. And then you can just turn the flash off down there. Loading, just like any standard 35mm SLR. If you watched any of my videos, you know how to load one of these things by now. If you haven't, I'll just give you a quick demonstration. If this is your first time visiting the channel, why don't you subscribe? Click on the like button. I show loads of different cameras. The film just goes in this way around. The curvy bit going over to this side. This is the actual emulsion side. So this is the bit that you want facing the shutter. The back of it, this is just a plastic acetate sheet that the, uh, the emulsion sits on. So you bring the leader across, you feed it in to these rockets over here, and then you just wind on. See, it's taking it, make sure it lines up with these sprockets here, close the back. If you know my videos, you know I like to rewind the film just to take up the slack. And then when you advance, you can turn the flash on and open it up with help. You'll see that that turns. So you know then that the film is actually moving through the camera, so you know you've loaded it uh, correctly. Yeah. When you finish the film, again, if you've seen any of the films about SLR cameras, little button at the bottom down here, doesn't show very well being all black, but there's a little button down here, just push that up. To close that part, you need uh, good nails for that, and then you can, uh, he says, rewind the film. That just unlocks that sprocket because normally it won't allow the film to move backwards unless you've got the risk of double exposures. You'll feel when it comes off because it will go lighter. This will become easier to turn. You can just keep turning it a few times if you like. It just winds the film back into the cassette. And then you can just pull this up. Open the back. Take your film out. I've left a bit of leader out of this because uh, 
I did my own processing, so it makes it a lot easier to do your own if you do your own processing, just to leave the leader sticking out. I normally cut it so it's square, and then I know that I've not been exposed. But that's beside the point. So there you go, folks. It's a nice, simple camera for today. It makes a change from big old clunky heavy SLRs. Quite a nice little outfit. I can see why they're so popular, but the prices are ridiculous. They really are gone crazy on them. But yeah, if you find a good one cheap in a thrift store or a junk shop or a car boot sale or something, then uh, yeah, it's easy enough to check it out. And uh, yeah, it's worth adding, worth using. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Comments, questions, queries, etc. down below as usual. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff that keeps the algorithm happy. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.